Tell me about your conversations about Yates. Well, Yates was coming out of the um, ad steam empire and it was a float that I'd read in the press looked attractively priced. Uh, it looked like it would be a good investment. Um, the Premier also uh, had noticed that, I think. Um, a keen gardener, the Premier is, I'm not sure if that was a driver, this is a garden products group, but uh, quite late in the piece, um, after he'd obviously seen the recent successes of his investments in Woolworths, Seven and Guangdong, quite late in the piece he asked me if I could get hold of a prospectus for Yates. And um, I then rang Potter Warburg, who was the broker who was doing it, and I didn't say where I worked, I just rang up as Joe Public. And um, they said, I'm sorry, sir, there's no more prospectuses available. Um, the float is fully taken um, and we can't give you a prospectus and there are no more shares for, for anyone. So I then told the Premier that I couldn't get hold of a prospectus in Yates. And um, he asked me who the broker was doing it and I said, well, it's Potter Warburg. And then uh, I think uh, he asked me who the chairman of Potter Warburg was and I said, uh, oh, actually, well, it's Laurie Cox. Uh, I pointed out that Laurie works or sits on the Premier's uh, business roundtable, which is a grouping of sort of 20 business leaders in Melbourne who were, I think it was 20, 15 to 20, who advised the Premier in sort of monthly breakfasts. And uh, Laurie was sitting on that as chairman of the Stock Exchange, the Australian Stock Exchange at the time. And um, so I sort of suggested, well, you know, you could try Laurie. And um, the Premier said, yeah, I'll give Laurie a call. So uh, he went back to his office and uh, I think he came back around half an hour to an hour later. Again, quite excited. This was another coup. And he said, I've spoken to Laurie and he's given me 20,000 shares at uh, at one dollar each. So uh, that's another twenty thousand dollar investment. That was the last I heard of it. Um, I didn't talk to him about it again. I, I noticed when they came on at a thirty five percent premium or something that uh, that they were you know a good investment but I can't recall speaking to him about that. But I just remember him sort of coming back round to where we sit excitedly, telling me that yes he'd rung Laurie and Laurie had promised him 20,000 shares. So it was you who'd suggested that he ring Laurie Cox? Well, it was sort of, yeah. We, um, I tried to get a prospectus and then we had a discussion and we sort of said, who, he asked who the chairman is and I said, the chairman's Laurie. And, you know, and then I think I said, you could ring Laurie Cox. Um, and, uh, and the Premier said, yes, I think I'll do that. And he went off and rang him and, uh, and uh, bingo. Did you think it was appropriate for the Premier to be ringing Laurie Cox? No, well I felt uncomfortable about this at the time and um, I then actually raised this issue with uh, Alistair Drysdale, who's his Chief Advisor, and I said that I didn't think it was appropriate that uh, the Premier be ringing people like this to get large allocations in floats. And, um, and Alistair agreed and said that, that uh, he'd spoken to him about it and uh, that was the last I ever heard of, um, of the Premier buying into floats uh, by ringing people and getting large allocations. But, uh, but you'd had no qualms suggesting that he make that phone call? Well, I did sort of suggest he could make the call but he sort of asked me to get a prospectus and then he asked me who the chairman was, who the broker was and who the chairman was. And I think, uh, I'm not even absolutely 100% sure if I said you should ring him, but I can definitely recall pointing out that Laurie Cox was the chairman and that Laurie sits on his round table. I can, you know, as to, I mean, I, th I think I might have said you could try Laurie Cox, uh, or, you know, Laurie Cox is the chairman, you could try him, he sits on your round table type thing. But it's just something that, you know, I wasn't comfortable with and uh, I think in, in hindsight, perhaps I should have said, don't ring Laurie Cox because you're, you know, that would be abusing your position. But I didn't say that. I think we just said it, had a discussion as to who's the chairman. Laurie's the chairman, he's on your round table, you could try Laurie, and he did it. What's your view now of that event and what Mr Kennett did, how he got those shares? Oh, well, clearly it's a repeat of Guangdong. Um, I, as joke public, 
literally tried to get some shares and a prospectus and couldn't get them, ringing Potter Warburg's switchboard. And uh, the Premier did get them by ringing the chairman of the company. And in hindsight, clearly, I mean, I didn't realise how popular Yates was at the time. I mean, I didn't realise it was going to be, you know, as big a success as Yates and uh, as uh, Guangdong was. But uh, clearly, um, you know, it just it wasn't the thing to do. You shouldn't you shouldn't have uh, you shouldn't have made the call. And I regretted I well, didn't regret it, but immediately after that happened, I raised this with uh, his chief advisor, saying that it's something that shouldn't happen and shouldn't happen again. And uh, and Drysdale said that uh, yes, he had spoken. He would, either that he had or he would, but he said yes, he he was addressing that. So just finally on your conversation with Drysdale, what happened as a result of that? Well, that was the last major float that I was involved in in um, in the premier getting an allocation or a prospectus. We still talked about the market at length, but I think the premier was moving towards the view that the market was getting overvalued and that he he was going to sell the lot and take his profits. And uh, I think he did do that subsequently in 1994, later on. So we still talked about the market right up to the day I left, in, which was sort of nine months after Guangdong and Yates. But um, there weren't any more big floats that I was involved in him trying to procure, procure shares. For all, I, I don't know whether they then decided that they'd cut me out of it because um, I'd expressed a concern, or whether there were a whole bunch of other ones that went into Felicity's name, or whether there was none, no, no other ones. I have no information on, that, on those grounds. Once again, the Premier said after the event that this had been his wife's investment. Well, again, Yates was just a clear um, repeat of what happened with Guangdong. He, through me, attempted to get a prospectus, uh, instructed me to try and get hold of a prospectus. I tried, couldn't get one. He then rang Laurie from his office and then presumably rang his stockbroker and told his stockbroker to put them in his wife's name again, consciously. And again, if you look at the Yates 1994 annual report, Felicity Kennett would have been one of the largest 150 investors in that company and it, it had about 2,600 investors so it was an abnormally large allocation in a float that was hot. Retail investors got very few. The clients of Potter War Warburg got firm allocations or good allocations but no other brokers got a look in and members of the public got hardly any shares and it was, was it any wonder? I mean the shares came on at 30 odd percent more than the than the listed price than the offer price so it was a hot float there was a quick profit and again mrs kennett was some eight thousand dollars in front on the first day each time that there's been a controversy over the premier's share dealings it seems that the premier has said well it was my wife's investment and she's entitled to invest as she chooses what's your view of that defense overall well, I think it would be a defence that would be partly justifiable if Mrs Kennett was the one asking for the prospectuses, ringing the stockbrokers, making the applications, writing out the cheques, all those sorts of things. But she wasn't. Mr Kennett was the one who was dri driving all of that, making all the key decisions, making all the approaches, ringing his broker and then consciously putting them in Mrs Kennett's name. So. I just think that it was an act of, of uh, it was a considered decision to make it out as if it was Mrs Kennett's investment when clearly Mr Kennett was doing all the decision making.